Just the phosphodiester linkage? Yeah. Just maybe, like, can you just explain how, like, what it is? Oh, I wrote it down, yeah. Um, adjacent nucleotides are joined together to build a poly polynucleotide, and the bond is called phosphodiester linkage. So it's a phosphate group plus a sugar of the two nucleotides. Yeah. So this is the sugar, right? Yeah. And from here we have a phosphate. Okay. This, so that's the phosphate group coming off of the sugar. Okay. And over here we have some kind of nitrogenous base. Okay. This is a nucleic acid, right? Yeah. something really close to that. Okay. So anyways, um, so let's just look at the sugar for a second. Um, which carbon is this? Mm. Mm. This one? Yeah. I say. So it's number one. Yeah. Um, and then we go here, two, three, four, five. I think that is actually more like it's only a five carbon sugar. Okay. Um, yes, so those are the carbons, the way they're arranged. And then right here, there's a hydroxyl group. And it binds to the phosphate, the phosphate of the bottom sugar. So the phosphodiester linkage happens right there. Okay, it bonds the hydroxyl and the oxygen, or the phosphate. Yes, phosphate will be bound to that carbon. Okay. Okay. The number three, number three. Yeah. Prime. So <clears throat> in this nitrogenous space, there's going to be carbons. So to differentiate the carbons in the nucleic acid of the nitrogenous space from the sugar, they'll put the prime on it. And it's so only that's one, sugars. two, three, four, and five prime. Okay. Because there will be carbons in your nitrogen sphere. So when you orient DNA or RNA, you'll see this kind of notation with the five prime, the three prime, and that's referring to this. And then here's the. So you can see when you stack a bunch of those together, you know, five prime end and three prime end. Uh, so later on, they'll just draw this. Yeah. So the phosphodiester linkage always like occurs on the three prime carbon. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So it's um, the phosphate on the five prime with the hydroxyl on the three prime. And the, when you're replicating DNA too, the replication only happens on the three prime, right? The One more time, sorry. It starts from the three prime end, right? When you're replicating sorry. DNA. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. So it starts from the three prime. End. Nothing will ever attach to this end of the five prime. That's right. It will, everything will attach to the three, three prime. And that's what that three terminus and five terminus is from? Yeah. From those five mm -hmm. Okay. That's right. So, I don't know if this is even like relevant, but like, um, the anti parallel, when it's like three prime to five prime, well, how can you, how can you tell? Do you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. I see your picture like, here. What's your question? Just, um, how can you, how do you figure out when it's anti parallel and parallel? Like, parallel is obviously five to it's always anti-parallel, so because uh -huh. they just go in different ways. 
Okay. So, so one, yeah, like one, they're going like this. Okay. So it's like right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. So in a DNA structure um, where you have two strands that are anti-parallel, this will, the mirror of this will be flipped like this and overlaid. Yeah. So you'll have a five prime with the phosphate here and then the nitrogenous bases of this chain will base the nitrogenous bases of this chain. Okay. And it will go five to three. Okay. And the nitrogenous bases, that's where the hydrogen bonding occurs and that's what will keep DNA in this two-stranded form. Okay. okay.